Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. Welcome to a special BEA Book Expo America edition of my channel. I have two amazing guests with me, the very famous book cougars. You know I talk about them all the time on my channel. They are joining me in my hotel room, so I apologize for the the backdrop, but we are sitting on my bed doing this. So I'm going to introduce them and we're going to talk a little bit about how Book Expo has gone for us, how we all met, and, um, and then we're going to give you guys a couple titles that we're excited about that we picked up here that are coming out. So as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, because at the end of this, you guys are going to be walking away with some books that you're going to want to add to your TBRs. So True. how do we meet, ladies? Well, I think you and I met first. I'm Emily, of one half of the Book Cougars. Mm -hmm. I'm Chris, the other half. I just talk about them as if they're one unit, the Book Cougars, but yeah. that's, you know. That's, and, you know. Yeah, we, we, have, we have that. We also have our individual lives, but we really prefer our Cougar lives. So, so Russell and I met um, because there was a um, podcast called Books on the Nightstand, which has sadly now been put to rest. Yes. But they used to have these incredible book events at independent bookstores. And we met at um, the Santa Cruz book Booktopia, Booktopia, yes. Booktopia, and it's the Santa Cruz Bookshop. Bookshop Santa Cruz. Oh, Bookshop so Santa Cruz. if you yeah. are ever in Santa Cruz, um, Emily and I can both attest that Bookshop yeah. Santa Cruz is phenomenal. Fantastic. Phenomenal. You but, can go spend a weekend there without any events yeah, going on. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I've talked to you guys a bit about going to Booktopia. It still exists on a different way in Vermont. Right. And that is where I met Chris. Yes. We had known each other sort of through the interwebs, but in yes. person, what it, like I met you ago? and Ryan was yes. there, and we briefly shook hands and at the big Friday night event, yes. I think. Yeah, yeah, and then then I got to know you more through Emily when Emily and I went for the first time together. We hung out a little bit more. And, yeah, yeah, Russell actually came and stayed at my house, and we took him on. We we are in Connecticut. We took him to several Connecticut bookstores, and then yeah. we all drove up to Vermont together and yeah. went to a Booktopia event together. So much fun. And they caused me, it's all their fault, to spend <laughs> hundreds of dollars <laughs> on books. Connecticut has a phenomenal number of bookstores, you guys. It's, it's true. amazing. So, yeah, that was a fantastic trip. We went to Booktopia. We went, I think we even went into Massachusetts. You guys yeah, did a did. tour we of We went that. to Amherst. We went to the Emily Dickinson house because yeah. another friend was with us. Yeah. And, uh, so and Hi, Julia. I know Hi, you Julia. watch. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you went to the Amherst bookstore. I did. The rest of that. Yeah. I did. Yeah. So we have years now. We have been friends for years We now. have. Through books, especially. Books. But then you know how what happens with books is you develop friendships outside of it, which yeah. is so amazing. But yet you have this thing in common that you're willing to talk about books, as my daughter says, incessantly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's why you guys are here, because you like to have us talk about books that's right. incessantly. Yeah. So the book Cougar started two years ago now? Three years? December 2016. Right. Oh my yeah. goodness. So we just yeah. um, put out episode 77. Yeah, we do every other week, every other Tuesday we have an episode. Tell them your life. tagline. So we are the book Cougars, two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read. So I will link their website down below so you guys can follow them and subscribe on whatever medium you use to do your podcasting. Um, and they are phenomenal. And the great thing about the book cougars are Chris and Emily do not read the same type of stuff. So you yeah. will get something for you <laughs> on the podcast. Um, uh, and, and you'll hear Chris talk about Lilla Cather. Yeah. That will also happen yes. on the podcast. Yes. I'm slightly addicted. <laughs> slightly obsessed, I should say. Um, I wonder what it would be like if Cather was alive today. I think you would be called a stalker. <laughs> but that's okay. She's that's not okay. alive, so it's her, not her a Her number one fan. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a much more positive <laughs> Did I hear you're Stephen going to King a Cather version. event? Yeah, there's the International Cather Conference coming up in Virginia this year. They do this conference every other year set in a location that was important to Heather's life or her writing. So they've had them in Paris, New York, uh, all around the country and in, in, in the world as well. But every um, every spring, they actually have a spring Cather conference, which is in Red Cloud, Nebraska, which is home to the National Willow Cather Center. So that is going on right now as we speak. So I told you guys, yeah. Willow Cather. Yeah. She knows. She knows, she knows it all. Stuff. 
She knows it all. I have to tell you guys, it's a little distracting. So I, we are in New York. We're on the 17th story of um, my hotel room in New York City. I just watched a man change and get dressed behind the video, <laughs> which was a little bit like, what's going on over there? Why so did you there, tell us <laughs> I know. We So there the is all this stuff going there on behind us. There are in the house. <laughs> so I apologize. There is distraction behind <laughs> us through the window. Um, how would you guys so describe your reading style? If someone asks you what is your reading style, what would you say? Do you um, mean when you ask that question? Do you mean when we like to read, or do you mean the what's book, your what what's your like book affinity? Like oh, what kind of books are you really drawn to? I know, I mean, you're really eclectic, but you read a lot of memoir. I like, read a lot of memoir. I like to read literary fiction. I love to read cookbooks. I know that sounds weird. So if you can get me a book that is either nonfiction or fiction that has food involved in it, yeah. I'm in 100. Yeah. yeah. And Chris. You know, I read, I love history, so I do read nonfiction, um, and I like memoir as well, and mysteries, I do a lot of mysteries, so history, mystery, bio, yeah. some military. Chris also has a blog that you can follow if you are a blog person, chriswallach.com yeah. now, right? Yeah. And it's... Chris, standard spelling, W O L A K yep. dot com. I will try to link that down below too. Thank you. Um, and you can follow her. And that's where you, if you are a mystery reader, you know, I don't read a ton of mysteries, but if you're looking for some really good advice, they also have a, um, episodes of their channel dedicated to mysteries as well. So. Yes, we have John Valerie, who is a mystery reviewer and critic on periodically we try to have him on once a quarter and yeah. he does a really good job of talking about mysteries that are already out yeah. mysteries that are coming, coming in the future mm -hmm. so everything yeah. from cozies to serial killers yeah. Right. so yeah yeah so we have been at book expo america now this was day three it's final day and so we should probably apologize we are all exhausted yeah, <laughs> yeah. sweaty tired yeah <laughs> you are literally running around on your feet the whole entire time trying to collect books meet authors get things signed go to panels um, it is a crazy, amazing three days that we yes. wouldn't trade in for anything. No, it's really yeah. wonderful, but it is a little bit overwhelming and tiring. Um, I'm surprised any of us are finding words at this point, <laughs> yeah, but we seem to be doing a fine job. Yeah. Evelyn and I were talking last night on text. I was like, there's no ability to read because yeah. we're so tired that you can't even turn the pages. You know, a lot of book events are like that. It's funny. I took my um, gentleman friend recently to his first real like weekend book event, and he's an avid reader too and he said don't doesn't it bother you that you're not reading because I feel that way even just when I walk into a bookstore you know I'm like oh I should go home and just read yeah. you know yeah. and BEA is definitely like that and it's also to me there's another component of just feeling like I'm never going to get to read all these books <laughs> yeah. like where do I start how do I decide yeah and yeah. you do fall asleep thinking of all the new books that you've come across, yeah. all the great conversations about books that you've had. Absolutely. So it is it is great, even though you don't have time to read. Right. Books are swimming in your head the whole time. Yeah. And so I mailed myself my books today, and it was 52 pounds of books wow. for one person. So, yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> and just don't tell Dan, because it cost a fortune to get it home. But Yeah. I mean, um, it's a nice service that they offer. Yes. That it is a bit pricey. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What was your guys' favorite moment to, uh, of the three days? Like, who did you meet that really stuck with you? What Did you meet a publisher or an author or... You know, I was happy to see Carl Marlantes here. I didn't know ahead of time that he was going to be here. He's the author of Matterhorn, and I'll talk a bit more about yeah. him later. So I was really happy to see him here because he's, he's not on social media. Mm. And oh, yeah. so that was kind of under the radar a little bit. I was really happy to run into Alice Hoffman. She's here because she has a new book coming out in, I believe, September. And she's just an author, she's very prolific, so I realized as I saw her and was kind of completely having a fangirl moment <laughs> that she has meant so much to me actually across my entire life because I read her, started reading her when I was a teenager. Oh, wow. And crazy. her books just really have always spoken to me. And I find that it's amazing when you meet the authors and they are just absolutely lovely people. Yeah. Lovely yeah. people. Yeah. That, I have... We've been to two of these now. We've all been to a number of author events in our life. And authors in general are just nice 
people. Yeah, yeah. Just really nice people. I have to say that today we went to a panel about um, women in literature in 19, uh, nine, that's 1999, 2019 <laughs> in the future. And getting to hear Glory Edom speak of Well Read Black Girl mm -hmm. was worth the entire absolute trip to me. She yeah. was phenomenal and absolutely just so lovely. So. Yeah, and I got a copy of it. I can't wait to read it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, we each have two books that we've gotten. We've gotten many, many more, but these are the two <laughs> that we have decided to share with you. We're going to go down the line, one each, and then we'll go through it again. Now, all of these books are coming out in the future, you guys. So it is going to get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your greeds to hit the want to buttons. Um, as I always say, pre-order them from your independent bookstore. And if you want to have your library pre-order them, however, you need to get the books so that you can read them as soon as possible. So let's start with Chris and her sure. first book. Let's see I will start with um, Carl Marlantes. So let's Excuse see if me, we Emily. can. Yeah, we're going to try to hold it up a little bit right there. There you go. It's a chunkster. Show him this thought. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's a, it's the a Matterhorn one. was like this yeah. too, right? Yeah. And yeah. who's it out by? It is out by... Grove, Atlantic mm -hmm. Grove. Okay. Yeah. Or Grove Atlantic, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So this is coming out July 2nd, and it is it is a novel. He had Matterhorn come out, and then he had a nonfiction book called What It's Like to Go to War. Mm -hmm. And um, now this one is coming out. A lot of people are very excited about it. And it is set in, I'm not sure what time period. I don't know that much about it. Again, yeah. I was caught um, unawares by it coming out. Um, but it's, I believe it's two brothers from Finland who escape um, from the Russians coming and they are in southern Washington state in the logging oh. industry. Mm -hmm. So it deals with old growth forests being cut down and labor unrest. Oh, interesting. So I'm looking forward to it. I, that's all I know about it. Um, but if you like to sink into a really deep, great historical novel, yeah. Matterhorn, it's a Vietnam uh, war book and Marlanti served in the Marine Corps during Vietnam. It's one of the most touching Vietnam novels that I've read. There are scenes in there that are so simple, but they still s stick with me. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that, you know, the men are living in the jungle and wounds and sores are not oh, healing. And what it feels like when you have a sore on your hand to repeatedly have to put your hand in your pocket. Right. Yeah. And just those types of smaller pains that are just incessant. Mm -hmm. so and that Matterhorn is a chunkster, so yeah. it's one that you probably are gonna give a whole month to. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it a big take, one. it's like a 600 pager and it takes a good week yeah. to get through and it. And it's like a 40 something hour audio book yeah. too. So it is, yeah. it's a, but it's an investment I've heard. So I believe Matterhorn was published once before and republished as the Matterhorn we know it. If I remember its history correctly. Well, he was published, he took a very long time to write it. Yeah. About that. I don't know if it was published. I remember before. something about it, like maybe, I can't remember the details, but you know, if yeah. I figure it out. Um, but it's one of those ones that you can sort of get lost into. I know you guys, it's that time of year where we just like to get lost in a book for the summer. Yeah. Maybe yeah, one. I, when does it come out? This one comes out July 2nd. So again, it's Deep River, Carl Marlantis. That's not that far away. No, it's not. Some of the ones yeah. we're going to talk about are way yeah, far yeah. away. July 2nd is right around the corner. Yeah, so. That's right. Yeah. But I'll put all of these two bo books down in the show notes down below, you guys, so you can find them too. So, Emily, what's your first one? Mine is Never Have I Ever by Jocelyn Jackson. She's a Southern writer. This book is out from Will William Morrow, and it comes out July 19th. So that, too, isn't really that far off. I would highly recommend that you pre-order it and or ask your library to get it. Her books are very popular. And the other thing I will always like to say when I'm talking about an author whose book doesn't come out for a while, she is quite a lovely backlist. So if you've never heard of her and you want to check her out, one of my favorite books of hers is The Almost Sisters. She very often, well, I think almost all the time, I haven't read all of her books, has a mother-daughter relationship of some sort. And this one, we were told today by a, a, another uh, blogger friend that this is different than her other novels in that it has a little bit of a wicked kind of twist to it. Oh. A little on the dark side. A little on the dark oh. side. I ran into Jocelyn. Um, she signed it for me yesterday, and then I ran into her today 
with a huge cheese stick. <laughs> it was not my best moment of, of Book Expo, but she was very gracious, as most Southerners are, waited for me to stop chewing. And um, I asked her how she feels about having a book come out that takes a slightly different turn than her others, and she said, She's really excited about it. She thinks she'll probably lose about 10% of her readership. Oh, interesting. Which I thought was interesting, but obviously if she was willing to take the risk. Um, she'll gain some. Yeah, and she'll sure. probably gain some. Yeah. And the back says, it's just a game. Never have I ever. But what if you had? What if it was something so bad, so shameful, you'd do anything to keep it secret? What if your worst enemy knew and was determined to expose you? How far would you go to protect yourself? Amy is about to find out. Dun, dun, dun. Wow, I'm gonna hold this up one more time just in case so you guys can see it and get the name and everything. And I will list it down below. I actually think that sounds, so you guys, I've talked to you guys, I'm doing a bit more sort of thriller mystery this year. I've been adding them in. Um, you know how much I love The Silent Patient. Um, so that sounds really intriguing. And yeah. who hasn't played Never Have I Ever? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I am going to talk about first um, this book, which is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. You guys know how obsessed I am with Jacqueline Woodson. I absolutely loved her YA novel, Harbor Me, um, Brown, Brown, Brown Girl Dreaming, and then la her other um, adult novel is Another Brooklyn. Have you guys read Another yeah. Brooklyn? I have not, I have oh. So Jacqueline Woodson is, to me, probably one of the great American writers right now, and she writes about experiences that just tear your whole world apart. She can, and she's she's a poet by nature. So right. this book is a bunch of vignettes, and the way it's sort of explained is it says that it's the story of two families that come together, two families from two totally different social classes that are brought together by the birth of a child. Mm -hmm. And what it says is the book starts in 2001 at the 16th birthday party of a young girl who is wearing the dress that her mother was supposed to wear 16 years ago at her 16th birthday, but for some reason clearly was not able to ever have that party. Mm -hmm. And what Jacqueline Woodson does is she goes back and forth in time in these little vignettes um, and uh, sort of gives us the family dynamic of how they got to this point, to this young lady's 16th birthday. Mm -hmm. um, I will say we saw Jacqueline Woodson speak mm -hmm. um, yeah, at this thing, and she is she is she's a, a powerhouse. She's, she's awesome. If yeah. you get a chance, I know she will go on tour for this book, you guys. Please go see her, support her. And that is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. I have a feeling we are going to be hearing about this yes, book throughout reward right. award season. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah, one of the first things we did when we walked into Russell's room here was try and... <laughs> You know, slip that into our bag. Yeah. It didn't happen though. Yeah. He was Not, on us. No, hey, the no. day's young. <laughs> I saw her and I just stopped. I am. So, I have a fanboy moment. You guys know I'm obsessed with her. I think she's phenomenal. So, and I'm really, actually, really excited for Chris's next book because she's going to go graphic novel on us. I am. Yeah. So what so, do you have? And this is Smedley Butler. It's a graphic novel about Smedley Butler, and it is by Jeff McComsey. Smedley Butler was a Marine general. He's one of the most decorated Marine generals of uh, world, the World War I era and some of the smaller wars before World War I that most Americans don't remember anymore. So he served in the Marine Corps for over 30 years. Obviously, that's very dedicated, right? Yeah. When he got out, he started seeing a lot of the things going on in the world and how veterans were being treated and he completely went in the opposite direction and wrote a book that is still very much read today called War is a Racket. Because mm. he realized that he was sent to these countries not for democracy or to help people, but to secure oil rights and things oh, like right. that. So yeah. he, he um, it's complicated for the yeah, movie yeah, sometimes you now. Yeah. But this is a graphic novel from, um, well, I, let me go back and say it's from Dead Reckoning, which is an imprint of the Naval Institute Press. Yeah. They just started this Dead Reckoning as their graphic novel line, which is fabulous. I've read several of them so far. Um, this one is coming out October 16th. Oh, that's not too far. It's yeah. not too far at all. It's black and white. I'll open a page here at random just to 
so we'll hold her a little closer to see. Okay. So Chris is a huge supporter of the Naval Press. Naval Institute Naval Press. Naval Institute yeah. Press. And she gets a lot of books and she really supports them and is very, I mean, you think they produce a product. I haven't read anything by them, but yeah. they produce important work. They yeah. do. You know, a lot of their, a lot of their earlier work was very much professional for the Navy and the Marine Corps. And they took a chance on a book in the 1980s that uh, the author was having a hard time finding a home for it. And that was Tom Clancy's The Hunt for Red October. Oh, and interesting. They published it um, because they were just like, who is this guy and how did he write this book that is so technical and accurate about submarines and submarine warfare when the guy was an insurance agent? You know, I think there was actually a CIA file opened on him. Oh, wow. That I saw. How does he know? So, <laughs> um, so but the, what... Um, catapulted that book to fame and Tom Clancy was that Ronald Reagan gave it a shot out. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so um, Naval Institute Press, they're, they're just really great. They have a lot of, they do have a lot of professional books, but they have a lot of historical books about men and women, ships. Uh, it's just a great press. I really enjoy them. And now with this graphic novel line, I think they're going to be exposing a lot more people yeah. to these military stories. So this one, you guys, if you are interested in that, and I'm sure we all have a man or a woman in our life that loves military history, go to the publisher and pre-order it from yeah. them because they're not going to be, you know, in your everyday bookstore because right. they are very, very small. So go support them. If it is something, if you're thinking Christmas gifts, if you're thinking, Absolutely. go to them and support them and order straight from them. I will try to link... I'm saying I'm going to link all these things down below, you know, my memory and how that's going to be. But I'll try to find a link for Naval Institute Press down below. Um, and I forgot to tell you guys real quick, this book by Jacqueline Woodson, it comes out September 17th, 2019. So I forgot to slip that in. So there you go. Okay, Emily. The next book I'm going to talk about is American Dirt by Janine Cummins. When you walk into Book Expo, there are these huge banners in the foyer, and this one had, I think, one of the biggest banners, and it said, the most anticipated book of 2020, which is, you know, set in a pretty high bar. <laughs> it is. And but, 2020 is very far away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Emily asked me if she should even talk about this yeah. book, but the other thing on that big thing was... This book was called This Generation's Grapes of Wrath. Right. And so the book cougars, if you want to go back in history, did a, but a whole read on their channel of Grapes of Wrath. Yes, and you can did. definitely see yeah. what they feel about it. It's yeah, actually yeah. one of my favorite classics of all time. I absolutely love it. So what is this one about a bit? Do we know? Well, it comes out January 21st, 2020. That's well, not that not far that away. Far. It will be before we know it. Yeah, Some of us are praying for 2020 to get <laughs> That's there. That's right. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Um, so, and I also, I would, I would suspect this is not, no. you know, that it's going to have a very exciting cover, yes. but it's just so far away that they probably haven't figured out and the And it's cover flat iron books, right? It is, um, flat iron books. Yeah. yeah. So. Which is very appropriate as we sit here in New York City. Yeah. Flat yeah, iron is the flat phenomenal. Iron, yeah. yeah. Um, so the, it, it also says, um, on the back, beautifully written, thrilling in its propulsive force, American Dirt is a new American classic. And that's by Tara Conklin. The woman who wrote The Last Romantics. You guys know how much I love The Last yeah. Romantics. That book was fantastic. So it's a it's actually an um, an immigrant story because the wife of the, Janine, who is the author, is uh, was the wife of an undocumented immigrant, and she went to this publishing house and said, "I really want to write about what that experience looks like, oh. not just you know like it's a bunch of brown people trying to get over the border. That it's much more." In, involved and it involves families as we know and families of people where who have been living very happy happy lives yeah. and then things happen and their lives get unturned so I'm gonna just read a little piece it says this is the story of a Mexican mother and son who are trying to escape a vengeful drug lord into El Norte American Dirt is a road novel a mother-son novel and a portrait of a nation and a people under siege so that's about all I know about it. So you know how I usually wait till closer to when a book's going to be published to read it? That book may not wait. I may be reading yeah. it. It sounds phenomenal. It I, really does. I have yeah. a feeling we will also be hearing about this book in the future because I think it's going to be uh, amazing. So again, American mm -hmm. Dirt by 
Elaine Cummings? Is that her? What's her first Janine name? Cummings. Janine Cummings. Cummings. Um, Cummings. 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 I'm going to hold it up here because I'm totally butchering everything. <laughs> Flat Iron, and it comes out January 21st, 2020. 2020. My last book, you guys, is going to be a memoir, and that is How We Fight for Our Lives, the memoir of Saeed Jones, and it's real glossy, so I'll hold that there. So you guys may know Saeed Jones. He actually is pretty prolific. He has a TV show, or I guess it's not a, a TV show, but he is on BuzzFeed's morning show called AM to DM, and it actually just ended. He was on that show for years. He does a lot of work with BuzzFeed, and this is his memoir about being a queer black man in the South. He was born in Tennessee, I believe, but grew up in Texas. Um, and I, I, I went to, this is one of Book Expo's um, adult buzz books of the year. And um, I'll do a whole video on those for you guys when, you get, when I get home. But the way that the editor talked about this is he talks about the fact that when Saeed was 12 years old and he was sort of coming to terms with his homosexuality and really realizing what his blackness meant to him that was the year and i can't remember the name of the little boy i apologize but there was a, ma a murder of a little black boy that was across the news and then months later matthew shepherd was killed in wyoming and so he had both of these horrid ideas in his head as he was coming to terms with his own sexuality and his own inner blackness and how, what that meant to him on top of that, his family is very religious, mm -hmm. and his grandparents are have very set ideas on what that means. Mm -hmm. So he has to deal with that as well. So um, I have a feeling, again, these are all books I think that we're going to hear about yeah, very much. Yeah, but yeah. that's um, How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones. This is out from, let me do this, I think it's Simon & Schuster. And, Schuster. Schuster. Yeah. and yeah. it comes out on uh, October 8th, 2019. So. We could make this video probably seven hours long and, totally <laughs> and talk to you guys about so many books. There are so many amazing titles. You'll get a ton of them on my channel. Please tune into the Book Cougars. Subscribe to their podcast. They'll talk about a ton of them. Yes. And you'll get all these different points of view on what Book Expo really meant to us and what we were able to take away. So. I want to thank you ladies very much for being on my channel. This has Pleasure. been some work to get these <laughs> ladies to be on camera. Thank so. you for having us. <laughs> and as always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. If this is your first video, I welcome you and this is a great place to start. I hope you come back for more. Until next time, we all wish you happy reading and we'll see you soon. Bye. Happy Bye. reading. <laughs>